So first of all, I've just opened Envy here. As you can see, the, the toolbars come up. Um, and now instead of opening an image to start with, we're just going to look at some spectral profiles. So to get to some of the preloaded profiles within Envy, we're going to go to Spectral and then Spectral Libraries and Spectral Library Viewer. Now it's going to ask you for a Spectral Library input file. So if you go down to the Open button here and to Spectral Library, now Envy should automatically default to where it knows it's storing the um, sample spectral libraries, um, which you can see is sitting under your C drive, program files, etc. Um, so we're just going to have a look in there, and as you can see, there's a there's a couple of different folders, and each of these have different spectral libraries available in them also. But for just to begin with, we're going to open the um, veg library folder, and then we'll open the USGS um, vegetation SLI and SLI is just standing for spectral library there and the file above it is just a header file similar to the image header files that you saw last week with, um, with the practical. So if we click open on that one you'll see that it now um, pops up in your input file dialog here and we'll just click OK down the bottom. Now the next window that pops up shows you a listing of all the different vegetation types that are in this particular spectral library. Now all we have to do to view the profile is simply click on one of those. So I'll just click on the first one to start with and you'll see this spectral library plot pop up here. Now this is the exact same plot or format of plot that we opened last week but based on the image. And so you can see that we've got the wavelength along the x-axis here, and this is in micrometers, and the value, which um, if you multiplied uh, by, uh, by 100, you'd be getting into a percentage. So it's, it's basically a percentage value in reflectance um, with a, a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 1. Now, a useful thing to also do is to be able to see exactly what that profile is that you pulled up there. So if you right-click anywhere in the plot window um, and just click on plot key there, you'll see the name of that plot pop up. Now I can click on any others in this library also and it will plot one on top of the other. So perhaps I'll add dry grass to that one as well. So we see that comes up as a different color curve and the name comes up here as well. Now if for example I don't want to look at that dry grass anymore, I can simply right click on it and select remove dry, dry grass there. And there, then it's gone. We're back to having the first one up there. But I'll just pop it back up for the moment because this is actually a really good example of looking at two different, two very different spectral profiles that are exhibiting similar characteristics to what you should have seen within the Liberty software in the sense that you've got a healthy vegetation sample being the first sample that we've pulled up here and the second sample is essentially non-healthy vegetation so we've lost a lot of the water content and the chlorophyll content has probably been decreased as well so you probably see similar features in these two spectral curves as what you should have seen within the Liberty software as well. So the idea is to have a look at at some of these different spectral signatures and pick out a couple of them and look at the differences between the, the spectral signatures, what areas of the spectrum provide the greatest difference. So if you're, if you're looking to answer the question on, on which spectral areas you would use, basically you're looking for regions where there is greatest differentiation between the spectral profiles. Now you can also open uh, other different types of spectral libraries in here. So one of the questions is asking you to look at a couple of different minerals and describe the diagnostic features of their curves. And what I mean when I'm talking about diagnostic features is, for example, if I was talking about this vegetation curve here, remove the dry grass for the moment, I might say, okay, so Within the range of 0.5 to 2.5 nanometers, there's a variability in spectral reflectance across that spectrum. Some of the noticeable features are a, a reflectance peak at around 
what have we got, 0.55 micrometres there, um, which is roughly in the, in the green region. We've got two absorption troughs either side of that green region, so representing the blue and the red regions. Um, so but around about 0.4 for the blue region trough and somewhere around about 0.67 for the, the red absorption trough. And that's, that's known to be indicative of chlorophyll content. Then what we also see is a reflectance peak broadly between the range of around 0.7 through to uh, 1.3 micrometers and that's roughly in the range of the near infrared region and then two very distinctive absorption troughs one centered at 1.4 micrometers and the other at around 1.9 micrometers and these are known to be very closely linked to the amount of water in the in the leaf sample that's been tested so that's how I would go about describing that particular spectral profile. The questions in the practical, however, are asking you to look at doing a this similar sort of thing for looking at spectral curves within a, within a mineral spectral library. So the idea is just to go through and look at where exactly those peaks and troughs are sitting and try to explain why they're occurring in those particular locations.